down in our spirit tonight. Go down, way down, down in our soul tonight. And give us another impartation. Give us another revelation. Give us another touch. We want another touch from you. Oh, Lord, touch us. Touch us until you clean us. Oh, Lord, touch us. Touch us until we purge. Oh, Lord, Touch us until we're righteous. Oh Lord, touch us. Touch us until you can see your reflection. And all that we do, Lord, we want you to see your reflection. Oh God, keep us there on the potter's wheel until you beat it out of us. Every impurity, every imperfection. Oh Lord, get it out of us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we want to be the church. A church that you can marry. We want to be the church. A church that you can receive. We want to be a bride that the groom is happy to see. We thank you tonight that purity and sanctification is still the cry of the righteous. We thank you tonight that purity and a cry of holiness is still the cry of the believer. We say that all. Snatch us in the holiness tonight. And they have the most shot to behind. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, help us. Oh God, in the bounds of temptation. For you declare in your word that likewise the spirit man heal with our infirmity. We call on help tonight. Heal with the holy ghost. Holy ghost of God. Help us tonight.
uh, on last month, uh, we dealt with Saul and uh, Samuel, uh, and we're going to pick right up where we left off, continue in this series, uh, teaching on things that hinder our faith mm-hmm. and things that hinder our intercession. But the Lord declared that 2018 would be the year that he manifested the promise of Isaiah 119. Uh, I said, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. The Lord will be unto God, which means this is the year that when you when you progress and celebrate and advance in God, it's because of no other reason than the fact that you were obedient to what he asked or told you to do. Is that all right? Which means this is not the year that the lazy will prosper. And I'm going to shout. This is not the year that the stubborn will prosper. This is not the year that the rebellious will prosper. This is not the year that you get to play the victim and say, I've been living right and people who have been living wrong are prospering. This is the year that when you don't prosper, you need to search yourself and figure out where you were not fully obedient to the will and word of God. I do, I must warn you, I do feel like teaching tonight and I want two amens in my pocket. So if you don't say amen, I've got two already. Is that all right? Uh, this is the year that if you don't move in God, it's nobody's fault. It's not your haters. It is not a witch. It is not a warlock. It is the fact that you have not yielded God an eternal yes that he could depend on and use to accelerate you to your next level. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of coming to church Sunday after Sunday, week after week, sowing and tithing and giving an offering and sitting around dancing, jumping, shouting, sweating, messing up my good suits and going back home to the same level. But I already know to another level in God. I wish I had one in there. I'm ready to go to another level, another dimensional realm. I'm ready to have another access. I'm ready to have another authority. I'm ready to get some more keys in the kingdom. And the keys are not being released to disobedient people who don't move when they hear him. Hear me, I didn't say you didn't hear him. I said you didn't move when you heard him. The issue in this church is not that you can't hear God. The issue in this church is that when you hear him, you don't move in him. You serve an accelerant God and you stuck in power. Nothing wrong with his transmission. I wonder what your mechanic says about me. So we dealt uh, one last month with uh, Samuel and Saul. Saul was the son. Saul was the son of Kish. Saul's father had long. So this is just a review for those of you uh, who missed last week's session. Last month's session, excuse me. Uh, Saul was uh, the son of Kish. Saul's father lost his donkeys. Donkeys were very important uh, in the time of text. Donkeys were a sign of wealth. Donkeys were a sign of industry as he got your work accomplished. And they were a mode of transportation. So it was no uh, light matter that the donkeys had gone missing. Right. And so Saul and his armor bearer, his friend, his servant, whatever you want to call him, were on an assignment to go and find the donkeys. They had gone to about four or five different cities. They had spanned a search of about three days and they could not find the donkeys. Uh, the friend, Saul's friend, Saul's servant, said to Saul, why don't we go now into Samuel's city? But there's a seer, there's a prophet in that city who might be able to navigate us and instruct us as to where to go to find the donkeys. And the prophetic beliefs of the Lord uh, is that in this year, in this hour, in this timing of God, when you sit under an authentic prophetic anointing, you will get instruction. I'm not talking about you will get sensation. I'm not saying you will get something to tantalize your flesh or your emotions. But when you sit under an authentic prophetic anointing, you should come out with instruction. Glory to God. And so they came to the prophet and they asked him, they asked him, uh, or they approached him and they asked of him, where can we find the seer? We're in 1 Samuel chapter 9 and about this point in the text, we're in uh, verse number 15. The Bible said that Samuel had an encounter with God the day before Saul came to him and the Lord told him that there's going to be a man coming unto you. Uh, by the name of Saul and he's going to be looking for some donkeys but it is this man that I commissioned you to anoint to be uh, the king glory to God over Israel and so Saul comes up to Samuel not knowing who he is and he asks Samuel he said where can I find the seer and Samuel says unto Saul I am the seer 
Glory to God. He said, I am the singer. Uh, he said, and go up before me to the high place, for you shall eat with me today. I'm in verse 19. And tomorrow I will let you go, and I will tell you all that is on your mind. We began to talk last month about the spirit of grief and how grief hinders us in our prayer and in our faith. We begin to talk about ways that we are still grieving. Y'all remember what we discussed, the ways you can identify how you're still grieving. Do you find yourself continually telling the same sad story? Every time you get a new audience, you tell the same story. Baby, you're grieving. Be healed and move on. Uh, do you find yourself still blaming outdated events for your current predicament? I'm not that prophet that goes over your head that you can't understand. I'm here to give you practical teaching. I'm here to give you something you can apply to your life. I'm here to give you something you can search yourself with. Are you still blaming outdated events for your current predicament? If you are, you are still grieving. If you're 40 years old, still saying that the reason that you don't have any money is because when you were 17, you were overlooked for the great for great grandmama, then you are blaming something outdated for your current predicament. Grandma is dead, buried, and surely she stinketh by now. You should stop blaming her for something that you have not taken the initiative to move beyond. Can't hear nobody say another. You still sit there uh, uh, about you about one cat away from an episode of Hoarders. Uh, and you are still grieving. You still crying over the boyfriend you lost in middle school. Maybe you are 50 years old and you're about to cash in on your retirement. You are still grieving. It's time for you to be healed and be whole. I can't hear nobody say another. If you're 65 years old and you at the bar wearing the same dress as the 21 year old, you are still grieving, baby. Be healed. Move on. Go to Bingo and find your man. Your man is no longer in the bar. Your man is at Bingo. Your man is in the social security line. You let go of what you expected to happen years ago. Because the anointing is where God is, not where he was. And we've got a people who are looking for God to saturate where he was. And God is saying, like my wife said yesterday, I have moved on. Hallelujah. That's an inside joke. But God has moved on. Huh? But something about your maturity started growing at an adolescent stage, and you are a whole adult. Where are you? Because the Holy Ghost snatched me into prayer and said, Where am I trying to take you? This is what he said to me. I'm just going to invite y'all into my conversation. He said, Where am I trying to take you? You cannot go broken. And so he traveled a little shot. And so he challenged me uh, to become whole. He said, Kimani, you're still grieving. Practical teaching. Uh, at one point in my life, and I'm okay, I'm healed in my heart, I can talk about it. At one point in my life, my family was evicted. All of my stuff on Monday, May the 19th, 2014, was out in black trash bags all over the street. It was embarrassing. It was humiliating. It wrecked my life. All my stuff was in trash bags. Consequently, when my wife and I got married and I would go to do my laundry at the laundromat, or she would go to do our laundry at the laundromat, she would bring the clothes back, or we would bring the clothes back in trash bags. Uh, I walked in the house one day, I saw the trash bags, and I had a fit, and I said, oh no, I cannot have my clothes in trash bags. Why? Because it reminded me of when I was evicted. So here I am now asking her to accommodate where I have not moved on because now I can't see my clothes in trash bags because it reminds me of an experience that I have not reconciled in my heart. That might seem small to you, but the Lord said, no sir, you're still grieving. Yes, you were evicted, but you got a house now. Why are you still crying about that? Why are you still can't see your stuff in the if in a bag, so be it. You're not homeless. Huh? But you need to reconcile that in your heart and move on. Huh? Because now you're putting irrational accommodations huh? and you're frustrating the people around you huh? to accommodate the place where you refuse to grow up. Yeah. Huh? And how many accommodations are you asking for huh? from the people around you huh? to pacify the place you refuse to grow beyond? Now when people talk to you, they can't sound an ounce of irritated because it reminds you of that one man you knew you should not have dated and one time he raised his hand at you and now any sign of irritation is a red flag to you. I'm not being insensitive, but I am telling you that you've got to reconcile that in your heart and move on because now you have a badge of offense that you're displaying to everybody and you're putting accommodations on everybody to appease and pacify and accommodate the area of your life that you're still broken in. For those of you who it's your first
first time, I welcome you. I'm not your houses, cars, and land, honey, money, and man, profit. I'm here to challenge us into a place of wholeness. Because the Lord is no longer uh, saturated uh, and honoring and elevating broken people. Because some people, the only thing you master is being broken. So much so to the point that when we see somebody whole, we don't know how to receive them. And we've raised the people who would rather convince you that your wholeness is wrong than to be challenged into uh, becoming whole and coming out of your brokenness. Right, right, exactly. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, uh, so, says unto Samuel, he says, where is the seer? Samuel says unto Saul, I am the seer. Go up to the half place. You shall dine with me today. Uh, and he says, and tomorrow, mother, he said, tomorrow I will tell you all that is on your mind. The Amplified says all that is on your mind. The King James Version says, I'll tell you all that is on your heart. And so uh, he says, okay. And then Samuel says to Saul, he said, but as for your donkeys that were lost three days ago, do not think about them, for they are now. And for and he said, do not think about them for they are found. This struck me in our text because uh, uh, if Saul had come to Samuel to get direction about the donkey, and Samuel said, tomorrow I will, I'll talk to you about what's on your mind. And then he proceeded to talk to him about the donkeys. Obviously, uh, what was on the mind of God was not the donkey. We stopped last week because sometimes you're coming to God expecting Him to speak one thing, and when He speaks another, you refuse to let go of it. But then they go shut up But somewhere around Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, the Holy Ghost snatched me into prayer. Uh, he opened up my ears, and I began to hear a grievance of the Holy Ghost, uh, and I began to hear this statement that the church often makes: uh, "If I rebuke you, just say ouch or amen." Disguise it so you don't look guilty. Uh, but we have people in the church who make this statement, uh, but the prophetic uh, is supposed to confirm something that's already in my spirit. Uh, tap your neighbor and say, no sir, no man, uh, because sometimes the prophetic uh, is supposed to speak something new uh, and something fresh uh, that your spirit has never heard before. I'm not challenging your theology, but we have the most shy. But we raise this generation who won't receive a real prophet. It won't receive a real prophetic utterance. It won't receive a real decree. Because I didn't hear that in my prayer time. That is what the Lord said to me. Well, the Lord is not speaking something that you already heard. And a real prophetic declaration and a real prophetic word may not be confirmation. Might be fresh instruction, a fresh download. What would it profit every prophet in this earth to fast and pray and hear God for something you already heard? What's the point of living consecrated if all we're going to do is recycle information? So the real prophetic if I go shot is supposed to speak something to you that you've never heard before. And when you come to God one way and he responds another way, you got to be ready to hear him when he speaks a new thing. Yeah. Huh? And if you don't hear him when he comes, it's not his loss nor his fault. It had never rained on the earth before. Yeah. Now we have a man saying, you better get your house in order because it's about to rain. Right. To a people who have never experienced any form of precipitation. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. Now only people who got on the boat with him were his wife, his three sons, and their wives. So, which means everybody else was closed because no one was speaking something that they already heard before. But them being closed cost them their life. You better be open to hear what God is saying. Even when what God is saying is something you're not formally acquainted with. You gotta hear something thank you. You gotta hear something fresh. You gotta hear something new. If I get in the presence of God, I don't need him to repeat himself. I need a fresh download in the spirit. I need a fresh word. 
bound by the constraints of time. Time to get a little shot. Time to get a little shot. On the way to the seat, just shot swift transition.
But they said her heart just died before time. So that worry was on her. That that same it was going to take her mother. Oh, 